described on page 177. I don't necessarily know if there's a video on this, but but I'm bringing it up in the uh, in the PowerPoint, and you guys should have the Olsen book. Okay, so the patient is prone, <coughs> and the idea is the cranial hand is on the transverse process of the superior segment to be treated. So again, if I'm thinking of the L3, L4 um, facet, you are going to be placing your hand on the L3 transverse process, okay? And I can find that. I can do my V technique, kind of locate where L3 is, okay? Now at the same time, I'm gonna identify that transverse process. I'm not really applying a, a graded force oscillatory technique, I'm just stabilizing the transverse process from going anywhere. I'm going to ask him to extend his left leg. Can you lift your left leg straight up in the air? And isometrically hold for about 10 seconds. So what I'm going to ask you to do then in just a moment is, is to lift this leg, keeping your knee straight as best you can. You're going to feel me push in and hold it there for about 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, <coughs> two, one. Let it down and relax. Okay, now when he relaxes, now I can go in and spend a few seconds, about 10 seconds or so, doing a PA oscillatory technique, okay? After I've done that a few times, about 10 seconds. Once again, can we do the same sequence again? Lift that leg and hold. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, relax. Okay. And then once again, I can do about 10 seconds. You can repeat this technique three to four times, okay? So what are we doing here, right? That's the, that's the question. That was one of the things I was looking at even for myself a few moments ago, okay? When you're stabilizing the transverse process, okay, and you're asking the person to extend, again, this is a bottom-up motion, okay? We're extending the vertebrae starting at S1, L5, then L5, 4, 4, 3. So if I'm on the L3 transverse process, L5 is extending, then the next one up, L4 starts to extend. And when we think of extension, we think of the, the, the facet joints gliding over each other and actually compressing the joint more than anything else. But if you actually look at some of these from below, you almost get a sense that, and, and you really need to pull out these fine models, is if you stabilize, if you just hold L3 in place and you just superiorly um, translate the L4 body, you almost get a sense that the, the facet joint is almost even open in a little bit. So, and then if you do the opposite, if you just leave L4 alone and you, and you glide L3 on L4, it looks like they're compressing more. So I don't have any, any biomechanical book that says this is the case, but it almost looks to me like in a way you're almost starting to, you almost get like a little bit of a separation of that facet joint when you're moving it from bottom up and top down. So take, take that with a very, very strong grain of salt because I don't have any, any biomechanical data or kinesiological data to back that up that that's the case, okay? But, but just looking at it right now here on the spine, it seems to be what might be happening. So I wonder if that's why this treatment can start to become successful. And this is for someone with a very, you know, a, a locked up facet joint. You're convinced at this point this is a facet problem and you're looking to release it. The idea behind the isometric lift of the leg is to get the contralateral isometric contraction and, and, and contra not so much isometric, but the contraction of the multifidus. And when you're contracting the multifidus, that's what creates the extension in the spine, okay? That's how we're creating the extension movement in the spine, by contracting the multifidus muscle, okay? So that's how that technique's done, all right? So why don't you all break it down into groups and go through those three. You're only stabilizing the, the lateral. Yes. Yeah.